This is the uh, video that goes with um, lesson 8.2. This is all to do with quadratic um, uh, modeling again, and this time we're going to be using it to make predictions. Now, first of all, the um, Desmos activity that I'm using right now is not quite exactly the same as the one that you're using. Um, I've added some stuff in so I can actually do the videos that little bit easier. So don't try matching up slide numbers because they're not quite going to work exactly the same. So basically today, we're going to remember the fact that sometimes we have graphs that are straight line graphs, and sometimes we have graphs that are going to be curved graphs like this U shape here as well. And depending on which type it is, these are the different equations that we have to type into Desmos. Now, for most of this unit, though, we are focused on these quadratic ones, and we looked at linear ones in a previous unit. Now, I've actually already got a table typed in here, and as I'm, I'm just going to switch this off just for a second so we can look at the points. So as you're looking at this one here, it's kind of important when you're doing the questions, you're not normally going to know which unit you're in. So you'd actually have to look. So clearly for this one here, you can see this makes a nice straight line. So when it makes a nice straight line, we use the Y1 to so the MX1 plus B equation. And you can actually see that it draws a perfect straight line. It actually goes through every single point here. And if we look at the bottom here, you can see it says M is 0 0.5. Remember, that's the slope. And B is 1. That's your y-intercept, which you can clearly see here. So in terms of an equation, remember what this actually means. These letters, we have to plug back into this equation at the top. So we would actually say Y equals the first one is the slope. So that's one that has an X next to it. And then the second one would be the y-intercept. And you can see as I click on it, it draws exactly over the top. And if it asks you for the equation, that's what you have to come up with from these numbers here. Now, annoyingly, perhaps with this activity, I would normally round my answers to two decimal places. With this being a Desmos activity to check, if you see like five, six decimal places, you have to type in all five, six decimal places. Otherwise, the computer will say that your answer is incorrect. So uh, just be aware of that. So that was the question I actually just answered. And you can see that I copied in the table there. It uh, looks like I actually missed out a value. Uh, perhaps, perhaps that was a mistake on my part. Uh, but then you'd be able to type in the answer. So this one was linear. And it was 0.5x plus 1. And then when we check our answer, you can see that it's correct. Now, for this one here, I actually typed in on the next slide. So on slide five, um, now you, of course, would have to type this table in yourself. So just remember also how we're getting this table. We're clicking plus, we're clicking table. Make sure it says X1 and Y1. If it has a different number, then just delete the number and then put the correct number back. Sometimes it'll say X2 and Y2. Just make sure it's X1 and Y1. So we type in the values. Now, once you've typed in the values, you've got to look at the picture. Now, initially, you might kind of think it's straight, but notice, look at what's happening here. If that doesn't continue here, or if you look at this straight line here, it's actually starting to curve up very, very slightly for this one. So this is why I actually chose the other equation, this AX squared plus BX plus C with the little one there as well. And actually, when we type that in, you can actually see that it does go through every single point as well. So this one has three numbers, A, B, and C. So the A two is two, so that's two X squared. B is one, so plus one X. And C is negative three, so you can put plus negative three, or even better, just subtract three. Technically, I don't even need to put the one there. I could just put plus X. And notice it still gives me the same answer, because X and one X, let me just draw it again, are exactly the same thing. So as we go back, I'm just going to remember those numbers, two, one, and negative three. So as I'm filling it in, this one was quadratic, and it was 2x squared plus x minus 3. I'm going to put that 1x in just to see if it will accept it, because I haven't had a chance to try it. It will, but you certainly don't need that. So as you're doing this, you'll obviously type these in yourself so you can see. All right, let me move on to the next two questions. And I think it's the same sort of thing. So you'll see, once again, two tables. And I think the other two pretty much are going to be demonstrations. And then these are ones for you to actually try. So I already have them typed in. So let's take a look to see what happens. Now, notice I don't actually see any points here. And the reason I don't see any points is, notice this only goes up to about 4 on the y-axis. But notice these go up to about 45. So what I'm actually going to need to do is I'm going to need to zoom out a little bit so I can actually see the. There we go. And as we're looking at those points there, and we can perhaps zoom back in again once we get a little bit closer to what we're looking for. And you can see that clearly it's not a straight line because as it's going downwards, that would continue. 
notice it kind of goes down and then back up again. So that's why I chose the quadratic for this one. And this one, horrible numbers, 0 0.045957. You would have to type that in on the next slide. Otherwise, it will say that you've done this inaccurately. And same for this one here. Uh, we've got our table. So let's go take a look, see which one it is. Uh, I'm going to switch that off for a second. So there's my points. And you can see that this is a straight line for this one. That's why I chose the Y1, so the MX1 plus B. Um, strange numbers here. We've got 0 0.67 and negative 8.3442 times 10 to the negative 17. Now, you might remember this as standard form um, or scientific notation, sorry, uh, from middle school. And um, this number basically means zero point and then basically pretty much 17 zeros and then an eight. So pretty close to being zero. And actually, if we look at the picture, you can actually see that it goes through zero. So as you type this one in, you're actually just going to put 0.67x. And uh, that should be enough for this answer here. So let me just try that. Um, and actually, it's not y this time. Notice instead of x and y, it's d and t. So we normally start with y, which is d in this case. Uh, 0 0.67, not x this time, because it's x is actually t. And uh, I'm not going to put plus zero. Well, actually, let me put plus zero. Let's see if it allows that. It will actually allow that. And I'm sure it will allow it if I don't put it as well. Whoops, I am going to need to put the letter there. Now. And notice if I do actually pick x, it will actually say that's the wrong answer, because it's not x this time. It's actually t. And that should enable us to move on to the next question. So that's just a reminder of how you find equations, checking to see which one it actually is. Is it the uh, linear or is it the quadratic? Now, this time, instead of having a table, we have a list of coordinates. So remember, the first ones are the x coordinates. And then the second number in each one is the y coordinate. So I believe that I have these already typed in as well. And here we go. And looking at the picture, and I can switch this off for a second though. You can clearly see this is coming downwards, but then it's coming back upwards again. So we kind of got that little U shape there. That's why I went with the quadratic formula, um, the, the a, a x squared quadratic model, sorry. And let's take a look at what we're asked to do. So you could type those numbers in here. For the second one, use the curve of best fit to find y if x equals 10. So I typed in x equals 10, and notice it draws a line, a vertical line. And what we're interested in is where does it intersect? So I would look here, 10, that's the x number. So we already know that. So we're interested in the other number. So 25.53. And if I go back here, hopefully that should be what it's looking for. Uh-oh, <laughs> wrong answer. Oops, something went slightly askew there. Not quite sure what, but hey, you might have to check that those numbers are typed in. I might have mistyped one of those numbers. Let me just check that first number, negative 1650. And that is the danger when you use Desmos. You do have to make sure that every single number is correct, because if one is wrong, then you will actually get the wrong answer. I'm interested in the method right now. I'm going to assume I must have slightly mistyped one of those numbers as I was actually doing that. So but that's how you would work that. Normally, we'd have multiple choice questions as well, and you'd pick the one that's closest to the answer as well. All right, what we got here, a pumpkin tossing contest is held each year in Morton, Illinois, where people compete to see whose catapult will send the pumpkin the furthest. One catapult launches pumpkins from 25 feet above the ground at a speed of 125 feet per second. The table shows the horizontal distances in feet that pumpkins travel when launched at different angles. All right, so we can see the table at the top. We have angles and distance that it goes. Um, notice this is a sideways table as well. So if we were typing this in Desmos, this would be your first column, your x's, and then this one would be your y column. Uh, the table uses horizontal distances in feet, so we've got units. Uh, use a graphing calculator to find the best fitting quadratic model. All right, let me go ahead to slide 15, because I think we've got these typed in here. There we go. And I'm just going to switch that part off. You Once again, you can kind of see that this is quadratic because it's going up, but then it's coming back down again. So we're using that to make that determination. And there's our numbers, negative 0 0.261429 x squared plus 22.5914 x plus 23.0286. So you've got to type in that whole thing if you actually want to get the correct answer for this question. Now, this one's slightly different. Use the curve of best fit to find the maximum distance of the pumpkin uh, round to the whole number of whole feet. So the, the distance in feet is actually the y value. So we're looking for the highest y value. And also, what angle should we release it to get that distance? So let's go back to the picture. 
which is here. So what we're actually looking for is what's the highest value we have on here. Now, sometimes the dot doesn't always appear, but you're looking for that vertex. You're looking for that highest point on the graph. So as I'm clicking on it here, uh, 43.208 and 511.09. Remember in the first column was the, uh, I think that's the angle of release. And this is the distance that it travels. So I think the question also says to the nearest foot as well, or the nearest degree. So this would be 43, and this would be 511. Uh, let's just check that 43 first, just to make sure. There we go. And around to the nearest foot, 511. There we go. So we can see that that one actually is perfectly the correct answer. Um, I believe there's one more question to go. Yep, here we go. Five less than one third the square of a number of X is Y. Enter the rule in the box and it will draw the picture. Now I'm actually gonna go across to here because I think this will make it this a little bit easier to see. So five less is the negative five at the end of the question. And one third the square of a number means one third X squared. And it says is Y, so I put equals Y here. Now, actually, if you don't put that, it will still draw the picture just perfectly. But I just wanted you to see that's how it looks when you're actually doing this exercise. And then from here, I actually set my grid to make this super easy for you guys to check. Um, I actually put a step of one on each scale. That's why you can see it goes up in ones here. And I also switched off minor grid lines. I didn't really want those grid lines in there. I don't think they're as easy to do. And then I just look, where does it go through corners of squares? Now, one clue for this, if it goes starts with like one third X squared, count in multiples of three. So go like three, six, etc. If it was one half, I would go zero, two, four, etc. Or negative two, negative four. And then from here, I can just go ahead and look on the graph where they are. So for this point here, uh, I can see it's negative three, negative two. I just typed them in because I wanted to see, is this the correct answer? So I think this is the coordinate. And then as I switch it on, you can see that, yes, that goes exactly through the corner of a square. So I know that that's the correct answer. And if I just scroll down a little bit, we might be able to see those top ones. So yeah, there's six, seven, uh, and sorry, negative six, seven, and then there's six, seven. Um, I would always stay close to the axis. I, I would always, normally the Y intercept is gonna be a whole number. And then if you go to the right and then to the left, that should be your three numbers, uh, but you actually had a free choice of which ones you would actually pick. Um, if they give you multiple choice, what you should do is you should type in each one and then just look to see if it lands on the uh, on the curve or not. Um, if I make up one that doesn't work, for example, so if I pick negative one, two, and this was one of the answers, then you can clearly see this doesn't lie on the curve. And for that reason, I wouldn't select that answer from the multiple choice. So different ways they can ask it. Sometimes they can ask you to click on the picture, which we can't actually ask you to do in Desmos. They could ask you to do on the SOL. Um, or they could give you a list of coordinates and you would just have to select which is the correct ones. Um, I believe that should do it for this video. Um, that covers everything in there. Um, go, try the, um, go try the other questions and um, or the assignment for today's lesson and that should be it.